Welcome to Today in Hip Hop, episode number 32. It is your boy Noah Jones, and today we have some exciting stuff to talk about. We got all kind of news, ladies and gentlemen. Man, they are dragging Kanye West. <laughs> Especially Chris Brown is dragging Kanye West. We just going to jump right in. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Private Road Clothing. Make sure you check out privateroadclothing.com. Also, subscribe to noahjonesnews.com where you can uh, check out the video versions of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, today in hip-hop. Also, if you're listening to this on the audio format, it's on Spreaker.com and Spotify. Yes, sir. All right, check it out. Now, your boy Kanye. Now, we all know Kanye is notorious for trying to make the ugliest shit look cool. We know... Now, let's, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest. When he tried to come out with his clothing line, it looked like some homeless shit, right? <laughs> How you going to poke holes all in your outfit and try to sell a sweater for $250 or whatever he was charging? Some outrageous, outrageous prices for the most generic tour. You know what it looked like? If, if you grew up on the East Coast, you'll, you'll remember this. It looked like moths had gotten to his clothing line and just ripped all kind of holes all in his clothes. So you basically were spending absorbent amounts of money to look like a bum, ladies and gentlemen. So look, he's notorious for trying to make the ugliest things look cool. We can't say that these Yeezys look cool. And the newest ones that he came out with or he's coming out with they look terrible. You know what I mean? So we got we to gotta be honest. You know what I mean? We got to be honest. The only way things are going to get better is if we call these people out on their shit. See, what happens is sometimes people think just because they get to a certain level of popularity that they can do whatever the fuck they want to do and it'll fly and it'll pass and, and us as consumers won't really care. So the latest thing in the news is Kanye just got a haircut, right? Now I'm from New York. Where if you cut, I mean, pardon me now because my, my hair is, you know, I'm the, I'm the most dustiest podcast in this nigga in the game right now. I'm dusty. I need a haircut. But anyway, I come from a haircut culture where your hair got to look fresh. I'm from New York. Your hair got to look fresh. You will get ragged on, bagged on, ranked on, all that if your hair is not fresh. Kanye unveils this haircut with patches missing all in his, like, everywhere. Bald spots all in his hair. And he's attempting to make that a relevant hairstyle. Chris Brown went in on this guy. Chris Brown was like, <laughs> on his Instagram, he was like, nigga just wanted to line up. And he basically had a photo of Stevie Wonder cutting Kanye's hair with all the patches all in this shit. <laughs> He also, Chris Brown also was like, he asked the barber for the fucked up fade worldwide haircut. <laughs> oh my God, yo, this is, this is crazy. Now, you could say Chris is being petty because he was supposed to be on Kanye's new album and Kanye didn't put him on there. So you could say he's kind of being petty, but it is what it is. Let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade and let's, let's just be honest right now. Would you go out in the streets with your hair looking like that? And here's another thing. I'll be seeing the most dustiest rappers online, right? And because they popular, the females will say some shit like, Oh, I love the fact that he's so humble, that he can just wear whatever he wants, that he can dress however he wants. It's like, look, if a man came up to you on the street right now, and try to holla at you wearing the shit that these guys be wearing, y'all would say, get your motherfucking dusty ass away from me. <laughs> you wouldn't get these guys a time of day. So the fact that you basically trying to say it's a humble thing, no. Some of these niggas just don't know how to dress. Or they just cheap ass niggas, and they put on whatever the fuck they want to put on. There's nothing wrong with that. You can be a cheap nigga. It's okay. But some of these cats just don't know how to dress, ladies and gentlemen. It's all right. You know, fashion is not... For everyone. You know, so now let's 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 get into the to the nigga news. 
which is basically the coonery and the fuck shit that these rappers is doing. The nigga news. You know, we gotta, we gotta do the nigga news. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we got some news about Pooh Shiesty Pooh Shiesty had an amazing hit record And then as soon as he got his hit record Everything went downhill from there That is like He, can't, he couldn't even perform Like here's the thing As an artist Sometimes you're lucky if you get one record That takes off and does well for you You know what I mean You're lucky if you get one record he happened to get locked up during the time where his one record was blowing up crazy. So he couldn't perform the record. He couldn't do anything because he's locked up right now. So now his buzz is completely gone. You know what I mean? He had that back in blood record, I think it was called. Now, now, now his buzz is completely gone. But anyway, it says prosecutors are attempting to present the entirety of Pooh alleged criminal history during his robbery trial, which is set to begin Monday, October 25th. According to court documents, the government plans on presenting evidence of crimes the rapper is alleged to have committed when he was 11 and 14 years old. Pooh Shiesty's attorneys are requesting that the judge block prosecutors from referencing their client's robbery case when he was 11 and his assault case from when he was 14. While the prosecution believes the childhood crimes show opportunity, intent, knowledge, or absence of mistake, the rapper's lawyers argue that the alleged crimes have nothing to do with his trial. Here's my take on this shit. Now, when they say it has nothing to do with his trial, I have to disagree. Because sometimes an individual that is just a bad, fucked up, shitty type of person is just a bad, fucked up, shitty type of person. And if he has been doing this type of shit since he was a kid, of course it's relevant to this upcoming case because it's habit forming. It's not a one-off. It's not like he was put in a situation to where... Something happened and he, he, his back was to the wall and he did something to defend himself or whatever the case may be. This guy has a habit of committing crimes and we ain't talking about regular crimes. Like going into a grocery store and stealing a video game or stealing whatever, you know what I mean? Stealing candy or a pair of socks or whatever, you know what I mean? You're talking about robbery and assault between the ages of 11 and 14. Some of these individuals are just bad people. You know, so you have to sometimes look at these individuals' past, and sometimes, even though they say it can't dictate your future, you got to look at the habits. You know, when, when in high school they say, most likely to succeed. Why was that person most likely to succeed? Because his actions dictated, with all the hard work and the grind or whatever that he or she was doing, that they was going to be in a better position because their actions dictated it. So for you to basically say, oh, let's not worry about all the bad shit this little nigga did as a kid, and let's only focus on the bad shit that he's being charged of, accused of right now, it makes no sense. You got to look at everything, the entire timeline. You know, some people are set in their ways until, a, until something comes in and reforms them. And for some people, jail reforms people. Other people, it has no effect. So for them to say, you know, that they have nothing to do with this trial, I, I think that's bullshit. You know, and us as individuals, we got to be accountable and hold other people accountable for the shit that they're doing. You know what I mean? If you did some fuck shit as a kid, you did some bad things when you were younger, you know, if it's recent, then chances are you're still that type of person. You know what I mean? You're still that type of person. So that being said... I think they should use everything. Any any evidence that they have to build the case against this guy, they should use it. You know, because at a certain age, you understand the difference between right and wrong. And for all the people that's out here continuously doing wrong because they feel it's the lifestyle or they want to be cool, all that shit is excuses. It's excuses. A lot of people growing up with no fathers and they want to copy and, and continue the same cycle, it's an excuse. You have the full potential to be different than your parents. If your parents was losers and bums and drug addicts and whatever, you can look at that as a template of what not to be like and go the exact opposite direction. But a lot of people are lazy and they don't care. They want the quick and easy way out instead of doing the work. 
you know, they tell you all the time, hang around people that are most like yourself. If you want to be a millionaire, hang out with the people that are goal-oriented and focused that are trying to become millionaires like you. You don't sit around and do street shit and do crime and then think that you're just going to get away scot-free. We're in an age where they got cell phones. <laughs> you know, everybody got an HD camera. And then these guys are doing stupid shit like flashing on Instagram and all this other shit. It's like, bro, you're doing the wrong shit. You're doing the wrong shit. And then you're being sloppy and you're getting caught. You know what I'm saying? So let's move on. Let's move on. So we let's move on. Now, we're going to talk about there's a guy who was sentenced for life, sentenced to life for murder. Well, he's sentenced, sentenced to life for the murder of EBE bands. But here's the kicker. He remains at large. He got away. He escaped. Now, William R. Zate, 25, of Rockville, Illinois, was sentenced to natural life plus a consecutive term of five years in state prison for the 2019 murder of Chicago rapper EBE Bands, whose real name was William Pickering. R. Zate remains at large after being convicted in July of first-degree murder and concealing a homicidal death following a jury trial conducted in his absence. During the trial, it was revealed that R. Zate beat the rapper in the head with a baseball bat before moving his body to a wooded area and setting it on fire on May 25, 2019. According to a news release from the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office, the autopsy revealed that EBE bands died from blunt force trauma and multiple points of impact were observed on his bones. Zate was arrested in June 2019 after investigators linked him to EBE bands' death, but his family put together a $100,000 bond and he was released. He's wanted on an outstanding no-bond bench warrant for failure to appear and a previous warrant for harassment of a witness. Three other men, Colton Kenneka, Dakota Graff, and Manuel Ramirez, were charged in connection to EBE Band's death. Kenneka's case is still pending, while Graff pleaded guilty to first-degree murder on June 17th. Ramirez received a 180-day sentence after pleading guilty to concealment of a homicidal death in February. So this guy right here remains at large, ladies and gentlemen. His parents... Or his family put up $100,000 on bond to bail him out. And they haven't seen this man since. He's a white dude. He's a white dude. You know, we can't get away with no shit like that. He's a white dude. At least he looks white. I don't know what his nationality is. He ain't black, that's for sure. Because if it was one of us, we wouldn't have got out. We wouldn't have got out. There would have been no bond. And if we would have bonded out, they would have been sitting outside our door to make sure... That we don't run, ladies and gentlemen. This guy, for some reason, he was able to duck everybody. He remains at large, even though they sentenced him to a life sentence. It is so dangerous to be a rapper these days. It's extremely dangerous. Rappers are dying left and right. I don't know if it's due to the hate. I don't know if it's due to the type of music that they create to where... You're speaking into the environment. You speak that kind of energy into the world, and that energy comes back to you. I'm not sure. You know, all of those things could be a factor. But what I do know is it's not safe out here. It's not safe. Words are powerful. And the people you hang around with all can put you in positions to where you can end up losing your life. You got to move a certain kind of way. You know, you can't be out here showboating, showing off because, remember, we just went through a pandemic. We still, we still caught up in a lot of stuff. People out here starving, but yet you got these people out here flossing like they got it like that. It's going to make people, it's going to make people <laughs> want to test you and take what you got, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, um... Shout out to this to the to, to EBE Band's family. Um, I hate to see this this type of thing happen to anybody. You know, I'm not familiar with his music, so I'm not sure if 
You know, he spoke these type of ill intentions on himself. I have no clue. All I know is there was a lot of people involved in this. So this definitely wasn't a random occurrence. There was a lot of people involved in this particular situation. So you got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. How about some How about some Dr. Dre news? Shout out to Dr. Dre. We're still waiting on this guy to do a versus against somebody. I'd like to see it. You know what I mean? But it says here, Dr. Dre reportedly served a $1.5 million divorce documents at grandmother's burial. Ain't that some shit? Now you see how, look, now you see how women are? This man is grieving, grieving for his family. And what happens? He gets served with, with 1.5, some documents, <laughs> 1.5 million. So Dr. Dre was reportedly left, recoiled in anger, by the manner in which new divorce documents were delivered to him. The music producer was reportedly burying his grandmother in Los Angeles when a process server delivered legal documents related to his divorce from estranged wife, Nicole Young. Sources related to Death Row and Aftermath founders said he was approached at his grandmother's burial site as he was standing beside her casket. Ooh, that is so dirty. That's dirty. Sources from Nicole's side claims Dre was served in the cemetery's parking lot after the burial. Dr. Dre reportedly refused to accept the documents by hand, causing the server to leave them by the grave site. Nicole's side also denied the claim and said the documents were left in the parking lot. In the documents, Dr. Dre was ordered to pay Nicole Young $1.5 million, while reports claim he's paid $325,000 and still owes $1.2 million. Dre says he's already covered the full amount and believes there's been an error in the court's part. Earlier this month, Dr. Dre was accused of having a child with one of his alleged mistresses, Keely Anderson, in a wrongful termination lawsuit against Anderson. Details of the Aftermath founder's extramarital affair were revealed. Anderson, whose ties to Dre date all the way back to 2013, is accused of having employees at her body bakery company sign confidentiality agreements after having a child with the rapper slash producer. So yes, Dre's powerful. Dre makes his own rules. He comes and goes as he pleases. He sleeps with who he wants to sleep with. That's one of the, uh, that's one of the, the, the powers and the benefits of being such a rich and famous and powerful person. You get to do what you want. Now, these women, like they say, there's, there's, there's nothing like, like the heart of a woman scorned. You know what I mean? These women are dirty, ladies and gentlemen. He got served these papers while he was grieving at a funeral. Now, look, don't put it past anybody that you're dating because anybody could take it to this level. I'm going to use myself as an example. Some kids that I took care of for six years, kids of my ex-wife, they served me divorce papers and was laughing, giggling, joking outside the front door. Complete and utter disrespect for the man who took care of them and put food in their mouth, clothed them, gave them a role model, gave them advice when they own dad was nowhere to be found, was hardly ever in their life, and died of a drug overdose. You see what I'm saying? Dad was never around. I step in for six years and take care of these kids, doing what most men ain't going to do anyway. They're going to look at it and be like, girl, you got five kids? I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? But yet, these same kids, same ungrateful children, or laughing and giggling outside of my door when they serving me divorce papers, like the grass screen on the other side. So never put it past these women and the way that they feel like playing a victim, because that's exactly what they do. You can do whatever you want to do. You can take care of them. They're insatiable. You can take care of them. You can buy them things. You can, you can put them in fancy cars. Y'all know me. Y'all seen the whips that I was driving. You can put them in fancy cars and they still will have no respect 
No respect, and they'll still play the victim. So do not trust these women, man. You know, when you're in these positions of power like Dre, you know, you, you, lay all the, you lay all the rules out and the regulations out from the jump, and you let them know, look, this is how it's going down. You know, he has more options than she has because he's worth about a billion dollars. So he has more options than she has. And it just goes to show you that all the money in the world, which I'm sure she had access to, you know, isn't enough to keep these people happy. You know, her divorce settlement, she's walking away with enough money to live her life, live good. She can go to any place she want to go to on the face of this earth and live good off the money that she's going to get from this guy because Dr. Dre has been successful for so many years and his money is long money. So she'll never have to worry about mispayments and nothing. She will be good. But no, she still wants to drag this guy through the mud and rub his name in the dirt and all that other stuff. Just goes to show you, man. <laughs> These women are something else. But, yo, anyway, I'm your boy Noah Jones. This is Today in Hip Hop, episode 32. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I hope you like the content. Like, subscribe, share. Tell a friend, man. Tell people about the show. And stay tuned for the next episode. Love y'all. Peace.